Hello and welcome to ArcGIS Runtime, Building Augmented Reality Experiences. My name is Nathan Castle, and I'm a product engineer on the ArcGIS Runtime SDK team with a focus on .NET technologies. Presenting with me today is Mark Dostel, who works on the iOS SDK. In this demo theater, we're going to discuss ArcGIS Runtime support for augmented reality. We're going to start with background information and general concepts, then we're going to move on to discuss common scenarios, quickly review the available APIs, talk about calibration, and then we're going to go into demos. Finally, we'll discuss some additional considerations and talk about some resources that you can use to get started with augmented reality in ArcGIS Runtime. Getting started, I want to talk about what augmented reality is and basically just answer the question, what is AR? Augmented reality is any scenario that blends virtual content uh, with a real-world experience. There are many possible scenarios. It's hard to describe, but deceptively simple in practice. For runtime purposes, uh, we're encompassing visual content only. We use platform frameworks that enable this, in particular ARKit on iOS and ARCore on Android. I want to note quickly that this presentation does not cover game engines uh, like Unity or Unreal. ArcGIS Runtime does have a product for supporting uh, augmented reality through game engines, uh, but that is not covered in any way in this talk. Let's jump into some quick background on how augmented reality works. In general, Runtime renders a scene uh, using a virtual camera. That camera is simulating a physical camera in that it takes the 3D scene, the virtual scene, and renders a 2D image. Phones and tablets have a physical camera, which is much the same thing, but in the physical world, uh, producing a 2D image of a 3D scene. ARKit and ARCore, uh, the APIs we rely on from the underlying platform, know the characteristics of the physical camera and precisely measure camera movement. The Runtime AR Toolkit merges the physical and the virtual camera feeds, maintaining a relationship between the movement and the position of the physical camera and the virtual camera. Now, if there's a one-to-one -one relationship, that ends up creating a world-scale scenario, which I'll discuss on the next slide. But that can also be adjusted uh, with other parameters to create different relationships for the end user. The three common patterns we've identified are world scale, tabletop, and flyover. In world scale, virtual content, uh, GIS content in our case, is rendered more or less as it would appear if it were physically present in the real world. Ideally, content is pinned to a physical place. And so when you move your physical camera around it, the virtual camera also moves, giving the illusion that the virtual content is really there in, in real life. Tabletop, on the other hand, pins a virtual scene to a surface. We call it tabletop because tables are the classic example. It can be a desk. It can be really anything. The key idea here is that the virtual content is pinned precisely to a physical surface. Uh, I like to think about this as if you were to say print a 3D model of your GIS content and put it physically on a table, except this way you don't need a 3D printer. And finally, there is the flyover pattern, which is really more like a VR scenario where your phone is only really being used as a window into a virtual world, and the phone isn't showing the camera feed. Although it's using the camera feed for positioning, it's really just a navigation tool. Before I move on, I want to quickly discuss some runtime APIs and how they relate to the various scenarios. I'm not going to go in depth here because this is just a, a demo theater, but it's worth thinking about these and having these in mind when you watch the demos and thinking about how they uh, work together to create the experience you see. The AR scene view is part of the AR toolkit, and that uses an underlying ArcGIS runtime scene view to render a scene. And then it also uses ARKit or ARCore, depending on the platform, to create that understanding and to manipulate the virtual camera. I also want to highlight that because we're building on the native platform functionality in ARKit and ARCore, we also expose the underlying objects. So for example, if you want to do plane detection, if you want to take advantage of some of the more advanced AR features on the platform, we do expose those APIs so you can build on top of those. The origin camera defines where the virtual scene camera starts initially. And then when you move the physical device, ARKit and ARCore then moves the virtual camera from its origin. Translation factor, um, that scales the transformation that happens when you move the physical camera. 
So if you set it to one, that means there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. You move the phone an inch, the virtual camera moves an inch in the scene. Uh, you can set it to go higher, and that will cause the, the virtual camera to move more quickly through the scene. So for example, if you want to quickly walk over an entire city, you can use the translation factor to do that. Location data source. This isn't an AR specific concept, um, but basically that's how runtime gets location data, so global location data, for example, from GPS or other satellite navigation systems. That's a great opportunity to do manipulations, for example, for calibration purposes. And it's also worth highlighting that um, there's two types of location. There's a global location, and then there's the very fine-grained local location, which might be measured in, in fractions of a centimeter uh, by AR kit and AR core. AR location tracking mode, that just defines how location updates uh, from a data source are used. With continuous tracking, as we get uh, GPS locations or any other location source, uh, we continuously update the origin camera. Uh, you can do initial positioning where GPS is used at first, and then from then on, it's just AR kit and AR core doing the movement. And then you can just turn it off altogether, which is useful, for example, if you're doing a tabletop or a flyover scenario. And finally, we have set initial transformation, which is a little bit complicated to describe, so I'm not going to do that here. Uh, but basically, all you need to know is that is what is used to make the offsets work for tabletop uh, in particular, as well as flyover. So I want to quickly talk about calibration. This is one of the hardest parts of getting a world scale AR experience right. So it's worthwhile thinking about that um, even before you start your project. The key to a world scale AR scenario working well is an exact one-to-one -one correspondence between the position of the physical camera and the virtual camera. That is actually much harder to do than it might seem from the outset. GPS devices in phones in particular tend to not be very precise or accurate. We're talking maybe a few meters in a really good scenario. If you can get, get that level of accuracy. And sometimes it's much worse, especially in cities, for example, with tall buildings. Uh, you can get really exaggerated errors. Vertical positioning, elevation or altitude, is even less accurate with most uh, satellite navigation systems. And it's also a little more complicated to think about because each GPS is going to measure that value differently. Uh, Android and iOS in particular tend to vary. And there is a, a diversity of GPS devices on Android in particular. There is a, a difference between elevation and altitude that we don't typically think about, but is very important uh, to not confuse them when working in AR. Finally, there's orientation or heading, which normally uh, a compass is in the phone is going to be good enough for um, general use. When you're looking for pixel perfect accuracy, it starts to fall down. Depending on your scenario, even very small errors, one or two degrees, close up isn't going to be noticeable. Going further out will become a more significant error. So these are all things you have to think about and, and really consider this ahead of time when making your application or as you build your application. Um, otherwise, you may not end up being successful. Again, I want to emphasize there are many strategies. A significant portion of your design effort is going to be finding a pattern uh, and a set of corrections that works for your users in the field, in the scenarios that they're using it, and with the data you have available. Next, I'm going to hand it over to Mark uh, to take us through a flyover demo. Thank you, Nathan. I'm going to show you how easy it is to incorporate augmented reality functionality into your app using the ArcGIS Runtime Toolkit for iOS. We're starting with a basic application that is already set up to use the Runtime SDK and Toolkit. You can see we've already included the Toolkit project and included the two frameworks we need, the ArcGIS SDK and the ArcGIS Toolkit frameworks. The demo will show the flyover scenario. The first thing we need to do is add an ArcGIS AR view to our view controller. First, a little background on ArcGIS AR view. The AR Toolkit component is comprised of one class, ArcGIS AR view. This is a subclass of UI view that contains the functionality needed to display an AR experience in your application. It uses ARKit, Apple's augmented reality framework, to display the live camera feed 
and handle real-world tracking and synchronization with the Runtime SDK's AGS Scene View. The ArcGIS AR View is responsible for starting and managing an AR kit session. It uses an AGS location data source for getting an initial GPS location and when continuous GPS tracking is required. Some of the additional features of ArcGIS AR View are it tracks the user location and device orientation through a combination of AR kit and the device GPS. It provides access to an AGS scene view to display your 3D GIS data over the live camera feed. It provides an AR screen to location method to convert a screen point to a real world coordinate. And it has easy access to all AR kit and AR excuse me, AGS location data source delegate methods. Now that we've added the view to our view controller, we need to add it as a subview and set up the constraints. The constraints will make sure that it's the same size as our enclosing view. Next, we need to create our scene containing the 3D data. This scene uses a web scene uh, hosted on ArcGIS.com and then sets that on the sceneview.scene property of ARView. Next, we'll need to set the ARView's origin camera. This will determine the initial virtual camera location. So the first thing we need to do is load the scene. Check for errors. We get the scene's initial viewpoint location. We create a camera with that location with the heading pitch and roll of 0, 90, and 0. And then we set the AR view's origin camera to camera. The last thing we need to do is set a translation factor and initiate device tracking in the ArcGIS AR view. Using a translation factor of 1000 means that for every meter the device moves in the real world, the virtual world will move 1000 meters. And the last thing here is we call start tracking on the AR view. For tabletop and flyover AR, we ignore location updates. We do want to start tracking, but we ignore the initial GPS location as we've set an origin camera here, and we want to use that instead. At this point, we have all the necessary pieces together to build and run our flyover scenario. Now that we're finished building, we'll switch to the device. As you can see, as the device moves, the virtual world moves in relation to it. All of this was accomplished with just a few lines of code. We've let the ArcGIS AR view handle the bulk of the work for us. Back to you, Nathan. Thanks, Mark. That was great. Uh, next up, I want to do a quick demo of a world scale scenario. This is actually one of our uh, sample applications, and you can download the source code for this today and try it out yourself. This demo is showing the uh, Visualize Hidden Infrastructure sample. Um, one of the challenges with World Scale AR is getting data that is actually available where you are to test it. Uh, the solution in this case was to enable the user to draw it. You could think of, for example, a workflow where Maybe you're designing uh, an infrastructure plan and you want to uh, brainstorm in the field. Uh, you could do this. Um, I went out uh, onto the sidewalk. I had a, a Galaxy device. I was using a stylus. It was actually really easy to draw the content. Uh, and now I've started showing it in world scale. One of the key things to note here is the calibration step is using um, a base map to make it relatively easy to adjust the altitude. 
um, and also to adjust the heading. Um, I happen to um, be familiar with the geography of the area and know my heading already. Uh, so manual adjustment is a good option. Now that I've calibrated, you can see um, I'm visualizing the pipes that I drew. And this is using a, a GPS continuous tracking strategy. So as I get updates, or as the device gets updates uh, from the GPS, it is resetting the origin camera. One of the challenges with that is if you get a less accurate GPS position later on, um, things can shift in unfortunate ways. It can interfere with your ability to uh, maintain consistent calibration. Um, in this case, um, that was just particularly challenging. One option, uh, if you do need higher accuracy, is to get a high accuracy professional grade GNSS receiver. And now that we've seen the demo in action in the field, let's take a look at the code. The first thing you saw was drawing the infrastructure to display. Uh, in this case, it's just a simple uh, sketch editor in a map view. Um, I'm not going to go over it in too much detail. Um, just a straightforward use of the existing ArcGIS technology. Uh, once you've completed the sketch, you proceed to view it in AR, and that's where the viewer uh, activity comes in. So we've got a scene view, some buttons, um, a joystick seek bar, uh, and this is actually something we made to facilitate uh, easier uh, calibration. So the idea is that the further uh, you pull from the center, the, the faster the adjustment goes, and then the closer you are to the center, the more fine the adjustment is. So continuing on, we've got an elevation source, elevation uh, surface. There is a mean sea level adjusted uh, AR location data source. And this wraps an existing system location data source. I'll go into more detail on that in, in a second. Uh, we've got a property that tracks whether calibration is ongoing. Um, and for this scenario, the idea is that the user calibrates in reference to the base map. Uh, which is generally a pretty good option. Um, and so while calibrating, we set the base map opacity to 0.5 so that you can see the scene uh, or the camera content uh, as well as the base map. Uh, and then we also enable uh, interaction so that you can physically adjust uh, if needed. Continuing on, um, when we, we set up the view, we, we configure the surface, the scene view, location data source, surface placement, um, symbology, uh, turn off the space effect and the atmosphere effect. Um, this is what allows the uh, background to come through. Uh, and here you can see where we are adjusting um, our altitude offset, uh, which we're applying in the location data source itself. Um, our offsets for calibration. Uh, and we do a similar thing for the heading, uh, and we apply that directly to the origin camera as that value changes. And finally, it's worth pointing out that we are uh, enabling tracking uh, using continuous mode uh, when the activity starts, and then we, uh, per best practice, stop it when the activity pauses or uh, goes out of view. And that concludes the presentation. Before we wrap up, I want to highlight some uh, excellent resources available to you as you embark on your augmented reality journey. There is an article and a tutorial uh, targeting the iOS SDK that Mark has written on Code Project. It is excellent. I highly recommend reading it. There is platform-specific documentation in each of the toolkit repos. Um, so if you look up the ArcGIS Runtime Toolkits, you will find the platform-specific details there. Full documentation is available on the developers.arcgis.com dashboard. Uh, you have to go to the downloads page and select the guide topic downloads. Download the one for your specific platform in the 100.9 release. Finally, I want to highlight that runtime samples are available for each of our supported platforms. Uh, these include ready to use scenarios that simulate what you might do in the real world. These are excellent resources and I highly recommend uh, trying them out yourself. Thank you and I hope you have an excellent rest of your Dev Summit 2021. Before you leave, please fill out the feedback survey by clicking the link 
directly below this video. Thank you.